Not long after the death of Jesus Christ, God's one true church disappeared for 100 years. This lost century was a deadly attack on the church and the truth of God. Learn why the tragic history of the lost century has repeated itself in this end time. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. In the uh, early days of God's church, Around 70 A.D., there was a false prophet that was persecuting God's church and came very close to even destroying the church of God at that time, and that occurred roughly around A.D. 70 to 170 A.D., and here's what Herbert Armstrong wrote about it. I'll just make a short quote here. There ensued the lost century in the history of the true church of God. There was a well-organized conspiracy to blot out all record of church history during that period. A hundred years later, history reveals a Christianity utterly unlike the church Christ founded. And so the Babylonian mystery religion had changed those things, and for about eighteen and a half centuries there was no gospel preached around this world until this very end time. That's what your Bible says, and uh, this lost century, as Mr. Armstrong called it, he began his study of it from a German theological school that was talking about an obscure century. And what it was all about was two different Gospels. One was about the Gospel that Christ taught Himself, and the other one was about, well, they just wanted to use the name of Christ. And that, of course, is the one that won out and brought real curses into God's church and into this world. But Mr. Armstrong just electrified the church of God when he talked to us, and I was a member at that time, and he talked about this lost century that was totally blotted out of secular history. Now, that's, that's just uh, astounding when you think about it. How could that happen? Just all history blotted out about this lost century. Parts of it is in several books, but mostly and specifically it's in John's epistles, where he recorded that history. You see, God made sure that that history was there, but He put it in the Bible because it was blotted out in secular history. So I want to go through just a survey of the Epistles of John and show you why the God's own church had a lot to do with that, because of their sins and because of their uh, rebellion against God. And Satan attacked and uh, caused all kinds of problems. Secular history didn't record anything. God did. God inserted was recorded in several different biblical books, but specifically in the Epistles of John. That's uh, what Herbert Armstrong said, and that certainly is the way it occurred. I uh, looked in the files of my uh, sermons because I was trying to find, uh, find out about this history that we had taught in our own church, and I began to be puzzled, and I couldn't find uh, almost, I could find almost nothing about this history in the church. And we have to remember that. Uh, in the first century and in this last century, there is a synagogue of Satan. Well, the last two eras of God's church in this end time. Here's what I said about AD 70 to 170. I got that, of course, from Mr. Armstrong. Here's the quote The church history in the world just disappeared because the great false church destroyed all records of the world. One place John records it is in his three letters. I have another quote here. It was also stated by Dr. Ernest Martin, where he said, The period from A.D. 70 to 170 has become known as the lost century as far as New Testament history goes. God has preserved the central history in the pages of the Bible. Of course, Mr. Armstrong is the one that made that statement, and he didn't credit him with that, but uh, nevertheless, in, as far as the church was concerned, that came from Mr. Armstrong. But here you see 
In the first century and in the last century, there, there was a synagogue of Satan, and God's churches were being torn apart. Then and now, there is a duality here. What happened anciently is only a type of what is happening in this end time. Before the end of the first century, the persecution had reduced the true church. Many members had gone out of the true church by the A.D. 90s. Then there was this great counterfeit church that came on the scene and was causing all kinds of problems. But here, again, you see, if God's church lets down or begins to turn away from God or have sins in their lives, Satan can attack because God doesn't protect the church. There isn't enough faith for them to receive God's protection. That happened in the first century, and it's happening in this last century as well. Now, John, I'm going to just give you a little survey here of the epistles of John and show you how that history was recorded that was not recorded in, in the uh, secular history. Mr. Armstrong established the time frame in the 80s, 90s. He said that all of John's books, his gospel, his epistles, and the book of Revelation being written around AD 85 to 90. People were blotting out the history of God's church. John was working feverishly to preserve that history, mostly in his epistles. What was going on here? What was happening in God's church? Let's take a look at 1 John 1, verses 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God says we need to continually be repenting in our prayers of our sins and have God cleanse us. Now, if we don't do that, we run into all kinds of problems. This was a very dangerous time in God's church. Peter had already been martyred. Others had been martyred. And Jesus Christ, back when He was on this earth, talked a lot to the Apostle John. They were very close because He was preparing John for a long history in, in His work after the others had been martyred. God prepared him for that, or Christ did, when he was on this earth. So it was prophecy also for the last era, though. It's all dual. That first century is only a type of what happens in this end time. But that terrible 100-year lost century happened in the first century and into the second century. So. We need to be aware of that duality. So I'll go through uh, some scriptures here from the epistles of John, and you will see how there was a false church replacing the true church, and they, they were, uh, Satan was working inside the church and outside the church and causing enormous damage to the church of God. And you can see why God's own church had a big part in causing that lost century in secular history. This was actually becoming, well, the end of the apostolic age, and the church was beginning to turn away from God, and we were about to come on to the second era of God's church after the Ephesus era. But it was a great apostasy. And so that's why John was talking to the people about their sins. Notice, 1 John 2 and verse 1, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Well, what's this advocate? Well, that's Jesus Christ is our advocate. When we sin, if we will just see those sins and repent of them, He is there to help us, to help the Father understand more clearly what it's like on this earth and dealing with the pulls of the flesh. We need to realize always that Jesus Christ is our advocate. When we sin, we need to understand that. Verse 5, But whoso keeps his word, 
In Him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in Him. So we perfect God's love. Now notice 1 John 2 and verse 18. We'll see here where that duality is playing out in this end time. Verse 18 reads this way and from the Revised Standard Version. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist, that Antichrist, a man here, is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. So that Antichrist, there is a man. Who is this today? And who was it anciently? Well, we'll see that as we go along here. This Antichrist is singular, that Antichrist. So there is a man inside the church that is fighting against the church today and has, has really destroyed it, almost uh, all of it, except about 5 percent in this end time. The same thing happened anciently. The same thing. The church was almost destroyed anciently, or in John's uh, century. And the last hour is uh, mentioned really uh, no place else in the Bible. But let me uh, read this to you. We'll begin in uh, 1 John 2 and verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and uh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So all sins fit into these three categories right here that John's talking about. And they were in, into all of them, into all of them. And notice what was happening inside the church. This is as, about as bad as it could get. The same things happening in this end time. All of this in the epistles of John is prophecy for this end time. And, and uh, our book on the last hour will prove that to you. Verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come, and even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. God's true church started in 31 A.D., and then it, here in 70 A.D. it was in serious, serious trouble. So uh, we today, in this end time, even have a, a more dangerous time in many respects, and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see if you examine this closely that what happened in that first century is just a type of what is coming in this end time, with a lot of trouble if we don't understand and submit to God's warning message. It's very urgent. So there was a violent persecution, and where was it coming from? Well. Uh, there was a Diotrephes there, and he was inside the church. And let's take a look at what he did. The Greek word uh, for uh, the last hour is used only in John's epistles, and the Antichrist subject also is discussed only in the epistles of John. It is discussed nowhere else in the Bible. See, we need to see again what John was telling them and how he was trying to help God's church get everything straightened out in their lives spiritually. This last hour and the Antichrist is uh, discussed only in the epistles of John. And if you've uh, seen people fighting Christ, well, that means they're, that, that's the, uh, the Antichrist. And there is one inside the church in John's time and in our time today, and he's already uh, come and gone, really, in many ways, but he's not gone forever. But here's what it says in uh, 3 John 9, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, receives us not. This is inside God's church. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither does he himself receive the brethren, and forbids them that would, and cast them out of the church. 
Well, I mean, here's Satan attacking God's own church. And he had a man in the church, and if they obeyed God, what Christ said, and taught, then they were put out of the church. And of course, they were no longer God's true church. But that, that is uh, kicking out the true members of God's church. No wonder God wasn't helping them, and no wonder He was allowing secular history to blot out a hundred years of history about the church of God. But God has that history recorded here in the epistles of John. Obviously, we needed to know that, but this was a, a terrible, terrible time. Here, notice what we have in this end time. Antichrist is one of the most terrifying words in the Bible. And here's a quote from Joseph Tkach, Jr. He said, We feel it is our Christian duty to keep the book Mystery of the Ages out of print, because we believe Mr. Armstrong's doctrinal errors are better left out of circulation. That's exactly the way Satan thinks. He restored all things through a man in this end time. Matthew 17, verses 10 and 11. And here's a man that comes along and says that, he, that has to be stopped, and he's casting truth to the ground. Daniel 8, verses 9 through 12. That's what was happening in God's church and still is in many ways. So, anytime you have the Antichrist, well, it's obviously about a war spiritually. That you have to, it's, Satan is uh, doing great damage to God's church, especially if he's on the inside. And he should never be there, but that's the way it was with John, and that's the way it is today. And of course, there is a very elect, 5%, that is a remnant that raised up the ruins of the Elijah type who restored all things in this end time. All things. The gospel was blotted out for eighteen and a half centuries as far as taking it to the world. But the church was all alive all of that time as God promised that it would be in, uh, in this end time. Now let's take a look at uh, 1 John. Here's how John told them to solve their problems. And he said, concerning them that seduce you, here's what you need to do. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew Him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. What does that mean? that we're going to be like God. We're going to look like Him and be sharing David's throne with Him if we're loyal to God. Notice verse 3, And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. You can read the same thing in uh, Psalm 17 and verse 15. You come back to Christ, we're going to look like He does because we're sons of God and we're going to rule the earth and the universe with Jesus Christ on David's throne. What a magnificent vision! But John says if you don't have that vision in your mind, you won't purify yourself, you won't be motivated to overcome your sins. You must have that vision. Amazing! truth that John is talking about here, trying to save those people that were turning to Satan the devil. And in verse 4 it says that uh, sin is a transgression of the law, and of course you have to define uh, the law or you don't know what sin is. That tells you what sin is. And God says if you do commit that sin, that, that is uh, giving in to Satan the devil. But verse 12 of this same chapter says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and therefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Well, how about that? You see, he didn't like that. Cain didn't like that. He was unrighteous. 
And he saw his brother being righteous, and he, it made him angry. He didn't like that, so he killed him. And John is talking about that. We're, he said the church is in that spirit. If you just hate your brother, you, you're committing murder, spiritually. So he's telling them how to build the love of God. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. See, that's what John was trying to get them to do. But this was that spirit of Antichrist. That's 1 John 4 and verse 3. That spirit of Antichrist was in God's church and outside, but Satan was inside the church. And, and, the, and at that same time, he was destroying all secular history about God's church. How can you blot it all out? It must have a lot of power. But this is what was happening within the church. See, and he, he said, we've got to have God dwelling in us. And he's talking about how we need to keep the commandments of God and make sure we don't transgress God's way of life. But you can go on, and I'll just uh, tell you this, 1 John 5 and verse 7 and uh, half of 8 wasn't even put in the Bible till 1600. They were trying to uh, teach a doctrine here that is not biblical. This is Satan attacking the very Word of God. That's how strong he is, and God's people didn't have enough power to stop him. This is a, a terrible thing, when you think about it, of what's happening to God's religion. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge, at no cost or obligation to you. Request The True History of God's True Church, Unveiled at Last, The Royal Book of Revelation, and Our Advocate When We Sin. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.